Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman over there, John Lundowski. How are you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. Double videos today, but how are you feeling as a, a fan on this side compared to the other? I mean, not like it's it's hard to express it because of how they're playing. Comparison wise, it's very opposite of each other. Right. But, like, there are certain players on this team that I think we feel that could be. Right. You know, and helping. Uh... So, I mean, and, and it, at the end of the day, that is our goal. That's the goal. Right. I'm not talking about for like us as fans. Our, us as fans, the goal is to win. Yeah. But the goal for the players is to get to Nashville. Right. To get to the NHL. That's the goal. I mean, the ultimate goal is having your name etched on that big shiny thing. But, you know, the goal as a kid is to play in the NHL or for your home team. Mine was always to play for. <laughs> if I got that far, I was happy. <laughs> right. Um, But, yeah, I, I, I just don't understand why. Oh, all right. So today we had a day school day game. Always fun. Mm -hmm. At least I didn't have to go to a building at 1030 this morning, waking up at 930. Right. I have to do that a week from today. But that's the yeah. point. Um, the Admirals took out Rockford. Rockford in their last five are... Really? You're going to do this now? Five and three. Or, sorry, two and three. They have two wins, three losses. Uh, beating Bellevue and Chicago. Uh, they lost to Manitoba, Chicago, and Manitoba again. Um, yeah. They are three and two, beating Chicago, Belleville, and Texas. They and losing to Manitoba and Grand Rapids. Um, last year the Admirals were five and six, five six zero oh, and one against Rockford. Um, over the last five seasons, the Admirals are twenty six or twenty one five uh twenty one six five and one. Um, over five seasons they have six total losses in regulation. Yeah, not a bad gig. No. Um. I, I do want to say that before we cover this, I wanted to talk about Mitchell Weeks a little bit. Um, Mitchell Weeks, I believe, was playing his first pro game after being recalled from the E. Yeah, this is his first game after being recalled from the ECHL. Uh, Mitchell Weeks is a six foot three goaltender, catches left. Um He's very young, probably a guy out of college, looking for his last, you know, for looking for a chance. Let's take a look yeah. here. I'm going to do a little more scouting on him for you guys <laughs> because there wasn't really a whole lot of it. No. I didn't even know he played for them. Okay, so he's played uh, four games for the Indy Fuel. He had a 3.02 goals against average with a .907. Three wins, one loss. Uh, last year, he played three games in the playoffs for the Wheeling Nailers when, at, with a 1.93 goals against average with a 0.926. Uh, 0.929 save percentage. He did have one loss. Uh, he played for the Sudbury Wolves of the Ontario Hockey League where he went 23, 29, and 7. Um, he is six foot three. I think there's a lot of grooming there. Most goalies don't mature until their late 20s or mid-20s. Right. Um, we'll see what happens there. So anybody who's sitting here worried about Askarov giving up three a game, remember what I just said. <laughs> um, beyond that, um, I I I have a not a whole lot to go on 
at this point. So I'm going to turn it over to my co-host here, John. All right. Well, shots on goal for Milwaukee in the first period. Uh, they outshot Rockford 17 to 9. In the second period, Rockford outshot Milwaukee 11 to 8. In the third period, Rockford outshot Milwaukee 13 to 7. And in total, Rockford outshot Milwaukee by one, 33 to 32. In uh, penalties, uh, Milwaukee was one for three with six minutes and three infractions. Rockford went 0 for three with six minutes and three infractions. Um, then scoring in the first, giving him his fourth goal in four games is Igor Afanasyev with his fourth of the season with an assist from Yusuf Arson in his fourth. Uh, then Phil Tomasino scores his fifth with an assist from Roland McHugh in his second and Yusuf Parson in his fifth. So that's two assists already for Yusuf Parson. Yep. Well, let's just make it three. Cole Smith score or Cole Smith, Cole Snyder. Our captain and somebody calls. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cole Snyder scores his first of the season with an assist from John Lennard. Uh, his sixth and use of Harston, his sixth, his third of the game, and that was on the power play. Uh, Buddy Robinson scored his second of the season with an assist from Josiah Slavin. In the second, Luke Evangelista scored his second with assists from John Lennard, his seventh, and Mark Delgaizo his first. Ben Rockford scored with a goal from Adam Clending. Assisted by Alex Vlasic, and it was both their firsts. Then in the third year, so Parson scores a goal. So now he's got that uh, regular season goal monkey off of his back. Right. Yeah, you because know, he had one in the postseason last year for us. Um, But he hadn't scored in the regular season, and, and it was something that we were looking for. Yeah. Um, you know, the scoring touch along with the, the smart play. Right. Uh, that came with an assist from Tomasino, his second, and Willsby, his second. Uh, then scoring uh, was David Gust, AHL Player of the Week, with his fourth with an assist from Mike Hardman, his fourth, and Isaac Phillips, his fourth. Then David Gust scored his fifth with an assist from Brett Sweeney. Uh, the Paul Schneider scores an empty netter with an assist from Marcus Derby, his fifth, and Mark Jankowski, his fifth, keeping uh, Jankowski's point streak alive. Mark Jankowski leads the Admirals in points with nine. Yeah. I mean, this team, I mean, I literally, if you read it, nine, seven, 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 seven. Uh, Tomasino has seven points. Evangelista has seven points. Lennard has seven points. Parson has seven points. And Jankowski has nine. Um, in that for them, uh, for Rockford, like we said, was Mitchell Weeks with uh twenty six saves on thirty one shots. Uh, it is actually quite interesting because uh Rockford's. AHL goalie, um, he he kind of had to be signed because Chicago had an injury up top goaltending wise, and with Stuber injured, um, they had to call up somebody. Um, so uh, Mitchell Weeks got the call up from the E, and he was the backup down there. So that's kind of insane. Yeah. Um. The uh, in net for the Admirals was Yaroslav Askarov. He stopped twenty nine of thirty three. A couple of those goals, I don't think, were his fault. I think they were just really good plays. Yeah. Like the one timer, I I really can't blame him for that. Um. Also the uh the deflection that went off of his arm. Yet another one that, you know, it, there's not much you can do when you're in that position. Right. So about two of them are not his fault. It's just got to clean up play a little bit. And yep. that's something that he will learn to do in time. Right. 
Also, our defense will learn to help him with in time. Um, head coach for uh, Rockford is Anders Sorensen. Uh, assistant coach Rob Klinkhammer, uh, former Rockford, longtime Rockford Ice Hog, uh, former Milwaukee Admiral and Ice Hog is J uh, assistant coach Jared Nightingale. Goal coach Peter Aubrey. Uh, for Milwaukee head coach is Carl Taylor. Assistant coach Scott Ford, Greg Rollo. And Goaltending coach Dave Rook. Um, attendance at the BMO Center in um, in Rockford is four thousand eight hundred and thirty five. Not bad. Your referees were Riley Yerkovich and Casey Terry. Um, linesmen were Greg Offerman and Jameson Grenier. Um, the Admirals are back on Friday against a with a double header. I think they're back on Friday. I remember this. Yes, they're back with a doubleheader on Friday with, against San Diego. So we play San Diego Friday and Saturday, I believe. Yes, we play fr San Diego Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Much to be noted there on that one. Uh, for those of you, please, please, please subscribe to our YouTube page. I've seen we've been getting the views. Thank you all so much, but the subs mean more. Not that I'm pandering here, but it's truth. They they mean a lot to us, you know. So thank you to everybody watching. Um, uh, if Sherwood uh, clears waivers, and Tomasino goes up. Do you think that's going to be much of a shift to this team, or do you think it's just an even swap? Uh, it's just an even swap, I think. Uh, uh, because at what point do we both go, um, you know, because, I, I mean, I don't think they're going to, like, Tomasino's going to push Nashville over the hill. Right. Um, I, I just don't think he's got the time. I think he's got the confidence now. Right. But do you want – he just got it. Let him build it a little more. That that's, that's my personal opinion. Right. But that's just my personal opinion. The question is, you have to make this decision before they go out on this West Coast swing. Now, upside for Nashville is they're in Calgary. It's not that bad of a flight from San Diego to Calgary, which I believe Nash uh, Milwaukee's just going to fly out of Chicago. So they're, I don't even think they're coming home. Yeah. So um, it, it's one of those... Um, Interesting situations because no matter what we do, we can't avoid the the big question, which is, wh how does Nashville get out of their slump? Right. If they don't get out of their slump. What do they do to go forward to make sure that they can have the best build going forward? Right. So uh, there's that part too. Um. So. Um. It, it's just a curious thought that of, of how that's going to go. Um, now, looking at this year's draft, I, I do see Connor Bedard and Mete Mechkov. Uh, those guys are definitely going one, two. In what order depends on the team picking first. Right. But both of those guys are a number one Sherlock. So... It's it's kind of one of those things. Uh, Mete Metkov is a very good winger with a lot of upside and scoring ability, and uh, Connor Bedard is like Connor McDavid 2.0. So, I mean, it's kind of one of those situations of you have two players, very similar, very highly skilled. Um, you could see that in the future going forward for, for the, like, um, as far as the draft, scouts have them circled on on that board. So right. So it's it's even I've I mean if I'm saying something about it, obviously, I've been watching this draft for almost two years now, seeing right. 
to have progressed. And it, it's just insane. But um, that's all I got for you guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker 2002 West Saturday Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. We will see you guys on – double check this before I get it wrong. <laughs> like it did last show. Mm -hmm. We'll see you guys tomorrow uh, or tomorrow with uh, – actually, we will see you guys – Friday morning with the Flames, uh, we're going to be doing the West Coast games in the morning. Because yeah. by the end of the games, we're just like drained. So we want yep. to have with the most energy. So we will see you guys uh, Friday morning. And as well, um, check out our Facebook page for any uh, updates and notifications as far as uh, transactions, um, news, updates, promos for the Admirals. Um, those kinds of things. So uh, if you're looking for those things, um, if you're Nashville looking for a trip, um, we have games upcoming um, at home on the 9th, 11th, and 26th. So the um, <clears throat> we will see you guys then um, at those games. Uh, Rockford. Good effort, guys. Really, really good effort. You guys didn't quit. So I give them a thumbs up on that one, though. Yeah. It made it a good hockey game at the end. They did not. They went down swinging. <laughs> yeah, they did. So give, so just so that people are aware, um, I didn't save this part for the last or anything. It's just something I wanted to say. Um, also, yeah. good to Buddy Robinson, who, who played a, a heck of a hockey game. Um, so see y'all.